Our learning intention for today is that we are learning to subtract decimals. We've looked at using standard notation or vertical subtraction to subtract numbers, and today we're going to use that to subtract decimals. We could absolutely use desiccates to solve this subtraction problem when we're dealing with decimals. Um, so we, we can just draw them out and then take away whatever's down here from up here. So I've got two whole cakes here, which I then need to subtract from up here. So I've dealt with these two full ones. And now I've got five, uh, then I've got five tenths. So, uh, so if you take away these five tenths from here, one, two, three, four, five. So I've gotten, gotten rid of those. And I want to get rid of five hundredths as well. One, two, three, four, five. And then I just count out what I have got left. So the solution to 3.79 minus 2.55 is one whole. And how many tenths? I've got two tenths and one, two, three, four hundredths. Now I can absolutely do that, but it's going to be quicker and easier if I use standard notation, but this is a good way to think about it. And we know how standard notation works, and if you need a refresher, you can find the video in which I explained it. We need to set our values on top of one another, making sure that they line up with the decimal place. So it doesn't matter what numbers we have here, we'll have uh, ten we'll have units, decimal place, uh, tenths, hundredths, thousandths, etc. So long as these decimal places are in line, we're going to be perfect. If they do not line up perfectly, then we are going to be getting lots of miscalculations in our workings. Let's solve this problem. Okay, so I've got 10.61 minus 8.102. Let's work this out. So I need to line them up. So I'll put 10 on top because I'm subtracting it from subtra subtracting 8.102 from 10. So 10.61, and I need to line up my columns beautifully. So I've got my uh, my tenths, my ten, my units here rather. So 8. Point, making sure my decimal place is in line. One, zero, oh, two. Interesting. Okay, so I don't, I've only got one number that has a tens column. That's fine. So everything else is lining up beautifully. You'll notice that this one's hanging over the top. That's okay. This one doesn't have any thousandths in it. Not that we can see anyway. We'll get to that in just a second. Okay, so I need to start taking the bottom number from the top number. And oh, we've encountered something which might be a little bit tricky. So this is something which we need to think about because this might happen when we are subtracting decimals, especially when this one that we're taking away has got smaller parts than the one that we are subtracting it from. So we've got thousands here in this second one that we are taking away. Well, we don't have any up the top. Well, not that we can see. Let's see, what do we do about that? Well, I've actually got zero thousands here. I can write that, that doesn't change the value that I'm dealing with. I haven't changed the number, I've just added a placeholder, and that's absolutely fine. Because of course, we could keep writing that forever. It doesn't change the number as long as we don't add any other digits, or any other values. Zero is in itself doesn't change the number when we're adding it on the end of a decimal place. Okay, so what are we gonna do here? Can I take two from zero? Well, not really in this sense, can we? So I'm going to do some trading. So I'm going to turn these one hundredth into 10 thousandths. Okay, so now I've got zero hundredths there, but I've got uh, 10 thousandths, which I can deal with. So now I've got 10 minus two, which is eight. That's dealt with zero minus zero. Oh, I got lucky because now I'm just zero, my, subtracting zero from zero, which is of course zero. I must put that placeholder there. It's very important. And then I've got six minus one. That is five. Making sure I've got my decimal place. Otherwise we're dealing with a much different number. Zero minus eight. Well, I can't do that, but I can do 10 minus eight. And because I don't have any other numbers to deal with, that's all I'm going to do. I could cross out this and call it zero and then carry one over, or I could just see that that's 10. Bit of common sense there, but either way it's fine. So 10 minus eight is two. And so my solution to 10.61 minus 8.102 is 2.508. Let's try another. Let's try 16.201 minus, I'm gonna use a different color because I think that might make a little more sense, uh, eight, 
0.593. So let's try and solve this one now. Okay, so each one has got gone, goes into the thousandths, that's fine. We need to make sure we line it up with our decimal place as well. That's all good. So let's go 16.201. Remember, this is all separate here. I'm just, this is just, I'm now doing my workings down under here. This is the question. These are my workings. So I'm keeping them separate. Don't be confused. So I put that line there so that you can separate those. And then I want to subtract 8 point, make sure that my decimal place is lined up, 593. And I'm going to make sure that I've write down exactly what I'm doing here, put my operation. Now I can solve this problem. I'm going to use another color again. Okay, so 1 minus 3. I can't do that, can I? No, I can't do 1 minus 3. So I need to take 10. Oh, I need to take something from here. I can't take say, anything from there just yet. Okay, so I need to keep looking this way. Okay, so I can't take 1 hundredth from here to make this 10 thousandths or 11 thousandths because I don't have any hundredths here to borrow. But I do because I've got tenths here that I can borrow. So I'm going to borrow some tenths. I'm going to borrow a tenth. So I'm going to turn this into one tenth there. And I'm going to make this now ten hundredths. Now, uh, but I, I still can't solve this one. So I'm actually going to cross them out again and turn this into nine hundredths. I know we've got lots of crossing out here. It's important to write this down so I'm not losing track. Then I'm going to take the one that I took out of that ten. So, so turn it down to nine. And I'm going to put it there. Now I've got eleven thousandths. 11 minus 3 is 8. Now I've got 9 minus 9. Originally, I would have had to do some borrowing anyway, but I've already done it. So I know that I've got 9 here. Not 10, because 1 had to go here. I've got 9. 9 minus 9 is 0. Make sure that's very important, that placeholder, always. 1 minus 5. Well, I can't do that either. So I need to borrow from my units. So I'll turn that into a 5, because I've subtracted 1. And I've moved one over here. So now this is actually 11 tenths. 11 minus 5 is 6. Now make sure that I've got my decimal place there. 5 minus 8. Well, I can't do that, but I can do 15 minus 8. I could cross it out, but I know that that's just 15. There's no other digits to deal with here, so I'm just going to do that. So 15 minus 8 is Seven. And so my solution to 16.201 minus 8.593 is 7.608. Where are we likely to see this kind of maths in real life? Well, money. Let's do a word problem. I bought a chair for $67.85. I paid with a $100 note. How much change did I get? So when we're dealing with change, we're dealing with the difference and difference is subtraction. So I would like to know the gap between $65.85 and $100. What's the gap in between? And we can use standard notation to find that out. So I'm going to write this down. So we are starting with $100 and I'm taking $67 away. So that looks like here if we just write it out. So that's $100 minus $67.85. But now I want to write this out in standard notation form. So I'm going to do that just down here. So I'll put a line under that. That's what I'm working out. And I would like to go $100 minus 67. Oh, where's the decimal place? There is actually a decimal place. There's always an invisible decimal place, even if we don't have any decimals, because we could continue to write zero. It wouldn't change the value. So 67.8. Five dollars. Okay. Um, now I could, if I want to make it a little easier for myself, write those zeros in there because I've got zero cents right now in this column, these columns. Okay. So I need to do some maths now. So I need to do some subtraction. Mm, I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna have lots of borrowing here, and that's okay. So I need to be paying close attention and writing down whatever I do. I'm gonna use a different color just so it's a little easier for you to see what I'm doing. Okay, so 0 minus 5, I can't do. Uh, so I need to borrow a tenth. Oh, uh, no, but 0 minus, but I can't do that because I don't have any tenths or any units or any or any tens. Hmm, okay, so I'm going to need to turn this 100 into 10 tens. So I'm going to turn that into one into 10 tens, 
Okay, but I still need to, I need to push them all down so I can see it. So I'm going to actually turn that now into nine tens and turn, uh, because I borrowed one of those tens and I've made it 10 units. I need to do the same thing again, where I am uh, t borrowing one of those units. So I'm turning this into nine units and putting it into my tenths. I need to borrow one of my tenths and put it into my hundreds. And now we can work with this. Okay, so what I've just done is that I have turned my 100 into 10 tens, then I've turned one of those tens into 10 units, turn one of those units into 10 tenths, turn one of those tenths into 10 hundreds. Okay, so 10 minus 5, I can do that. That's 5. 9 minus 8, oh, I can do that too. That is 1. Decimal place, 9 minus 7 is 2. 9 minus 6 is 3, and 0 minus nothing is, well, we don't need to write, worry about that. So my solution is $62. Nope. Nine minus six is three. So my solution, and uh, zero minus zero is, well, we don't have to worry about that anymore because we don't have any more di digits going this way. So we're at the end. So that it will be my change. So let's write it out because we've given a problem in worded form. So I should give a worded answer. I received $32.15 in change. And because we're dealing with money in Australia, we round to the nearest five, that's already rounded to the nearest five, so I don't have to do anything there. Okay. And that is all for today. In this video, we have looked at subtracting decimals using standard notation. It's important to use whatever strategy works for you, but this is a fairly simple one. It takes a little bit of practice to get a handle of, especially when we're doing all of this trading. But once you've got a handle on it, it is a great and reliable strategy to use.